live in a moment. And it's prepared to screen now. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute to set it up. So for everything to link up, it's like a um, linked repeater system. You got to give it a second or two to, or the audio will all link up so you don't miss anything. Like an old, old two-inch TV quad machine that takes 10 seconds to pre-roll. So I'm used to that. <laughs> Hey, there you go. Okay, we should be live now. And uh, Lou Romero, W4LT, will be doing connecting and using the TARP Flex remote. And you may take it away. And now I'll mute it. Very good, Daryl. Well, good morning to everyone. And uh, by the way, interesting presentation so far. It, uh, it's been quite interesting to uh, listen to all the stuff with digital stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So we're just going to go back to analog things now. But uh, a little history about what's going on here. Um, one of the things that uh, interests me is the ability to uh, remote into uh, uh, equipment uh, for different types. And um, not just for me to, to do things like this, but for folks, for instance, now during the pandemic. Uh, one of the things that we have in the pandemic is, you know, you can't go to the clubhouse, right? So we have <clears throat> a 3,000 square foot uh, facility in, in Tampa here for the Tampa Amateur Radio uh, Club. We have three towers. We have uh, seven pieces, uh, seven transceivers. We have all this stuff, and nobody can use it because you can't go to the clubhouse because it's in a city park, and the city closes it, and we're screwed. So back before this, um, we, um, uh, I had the, 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 um, the luck of getting a Flex uh, 6400 transceiver, and uh, right before the uh, pandemic, I took it over to the clubhouse to experiment with it and to see how it worked uh, remotely. And uh, that was on a Tuesday. On a Thursday, the city closed the, the uh, park. Therefore, I couldn't go get my radio, and it was stuck there for six weeks. Well, six weeks, I got to experiment quite a bit. And uh, the club liked the experiment so well, they went out and they bought their own. So now there's two flex transceivers uh, in our, uh, actually three, because uh, K4LAW bought one as well. And... Um, <clears throat> we now can uh, uh, share them all between ourselves, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the one in the, at the clubhouse has basically evolved, and it continues to evolve. And that's one of the assets that we have for our members. Uh, and uh, I'll explain how this all works together. So basically, what we have is uh, uh, the architecture that looks like this. Uh, we have, let me see if I can, you, hopefully you'll see my mouse Anybody it's outside, and this is for club members only and for people in the West Central Florida section. We've limited it to uh, users in the West Central Florida section and, and club members. You have to be a club member to, uh, to be able to use a transceiver. So you have a computer at home, and that's running the, the smart SDR software, the green hair and everywhere, which controls our antennas. And it goes through the Internet, and one of the things that happens is it goes around and around, and it comes out of downtown Tampa. On our local HamWand, it's... Um, <clears throat> that's uh, set up and uh, operational for from by uh, W9CR and uh, the boys at uh, at the um, uh, what they call it uh, Florida Simulcast Group. And Hamwan is a 5.9 gigahertz uh, amateur radio based uh, internet uh, uh, WISP and uh, wireless internet service for ham radio. It's uh, it works quite well. And uh, that goes over the air down to our clubhouse, which we have this Dynadish uh, five. Uh, small dish, about $180, 5.9 gigahertz dish. It can go about 27 kilometers, but we only have uh, uh, 10 kilometers to go from the clubhouse to downtown Tampa. That goes into it. Whoop, what the heck? That goes into our router, which then goes to our switch, and then I have a five-port dedicated switch uh, just for the uh, the Flex remote. We have two remotes, but we're only going to talk about the Flex remote now. We have a Kenwood that's uh, set up as well. There is a local client running the same thing that you would r use at home, but it's running uh, locally at the station so that it can be used by people at the station. And uh, that goes uh, into the 6400RF deck. It's connected to our, our tallest tower, which is a 120-foot tower that has a C31XR uh, tribander on it. Each uh, band on this tribander has a separate feed line. Uh, and then EF240, which is a two-element uh, 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 40 meter beam. It is uh, sitting at 118 feet. The C31 is at 108 feet. That's turned by an Orion rotor, and that goes into an antenna switch. Also, on there's an off-center fed dipole, which we use for 30 meters and for uh, 
480, soon to be 120, uh, 160, because we're going to change it out to a bigger antenna. And that goes into the switch, goes into antenna number one. <clears throat> uh, six meter dedicated antenna on a tail twister rotor on a second tower. Uh, through another green hair and a, a RT21 goes into the antenna switch two. So we can do uh, right now from 80 meters to uh, six meters on this remote transceiver. Um, again, uh, there's a dedicated uh, sine wave UPS for that. I prefer sine wave because uh, radios uh, tend not to like uh, square waves in uh, the simulated uh, sine wave uh, devices. And uh, an 8-port uh, remote Ethernet power switch, which is important. We can turn all these devices on and off and reboot them and restart them, et cetera, et cetera, remotely through this switch, uh, which is a handy little device made by a company called DCI. Uh, on that also, we have a 5-volt uh, <clears throat> uh, power relay, which then is uh, basically an input in the back of the radio that uh, mimics what the front panel switch of the radio does. That way we can reset the radio <laughs> when, not if, uh, things happen to it. <laughs> and again, the Green Heron Everywhere uh, server, which is just another computer, uh, which is on its way to being replaced by, by a smaller and uh, more uh, reliable computer. Right now it's running on an old Dell that I was going to throw away. But uh, we put it into, into effect to control the two Green Heron uh, uh, antennas and the Green Heron base station that switches the, uh, the uh, antenna switch. And that's the entire system <clears throat> as we have it. It's evolved from um, just a, a simple, uh, you know, one antenna connected to antenna port two to antenna uh, port one. Then we added the switch. Then we added the remote power. Before that, I was using these little, you know, electric uh, uh, things you can buy, the electric plugs that uh, are Wi-Fi enabled that you can switch with your with your cell phone. That's what I do at home because I don't have the the wherewithal, or I don't really need the uh, a larger switch to do this with. But we've evolved and made it quite stable. It's uh, it's very reliable and very stable, and it's uh, it lives by the uh, by the amount of uh, bandwidth that we can get over the HamWAN, which uh, is one of the issues that we need to improve our our HamWAN receive capability or HamWAN transceive capability with a better dish. The dish that's up there now is a basically a consumer dish that you can buy at uh, at uh, on Amazon. So we're going to build a better system uh, to make that go. So that's the uh, the environment as it is. And this presentation is one of the things I show to members of the club that want to uh, uh, join our remote uh, uh, cadre and uh, use it. <clears throat> I do every user one by one. I, I take every user and I, 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 I contact them and I do each of the settings uh, one by one so that everything works well. And so far we've done pretty well. We got about 14 users now and uh, growing. Every week I seem to add another one. So, And we have not, ha not had any clashes, which is a good thing. So anyway, what you need for a computer for this, and one of the things I don't do is I don't read the the uh, PowerPoints. I, I assume that you all know how to read. So uh, I just put them up there. But it, a fairly decent computer is helpful, especially if you're going to run things like FT8, because FT8 uses processing in the computer. Not only do you have to deal with uh, connecting to the uh, to the rotor controller, but you also have to deal with uh, doing the FT8 uh, 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 graphics and uh, decoding and encoding, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you have to show the GUI of the radio. You have to move audio back and forth. Uh, there's a lot of things, a lot of things that are moving parts inside the system. So a, a fairly powerful computer like an i3 uh, or equivalent with a four-core uh, 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 processor is probably the minimum that you can get away with. I run it with an i5, and you'd be amazed, or i7 actually, You'd be amazed at what I'm doing here uh, to make this able to be uh, put on the screen for you. And if you're really interested afterwards, I'll tell you how I'm doing this with any desk and uh, remoting into my local computer, which is remoting into the radio, which is remoting into the Internet. Uh, it's crazy, but it works. It's the only way I can get you to see all the screens at once. So anyway, this is what you need. <clears throat> they have um, uh, This headset that I'm using here is the headset that I recommend people use. It's a Yamaha, so you can see Yamaha, Yamaha uh, CM500 headset. It's about $55. You can pick them up uh, on Amazon. You can go down to Sam Ash here or the uh, uh, Guitar Center and pick them up there. They have them in town. <clears throat> a little more expensive there. But uh, they sound very good. They work very good, and the radio seems to really like these. 
So, um, uh, and they're very rugged and extremely comfortable. So uh, one of the things that we have done is we've kind of standardized the audio processing in the radio to fit these headsets. And that way everybody sent sounds good. Now, if you can use other headsets too, but that then you have to mess with equalization, et cetera. With these headsets, if you buy these headsets, you recall a thing that says W4LT uh, CM500, you sound good. It's that simple. Now, if you want to do uh, things like... Um, like push to talk there's a push to talk button on the screen but the uh, km4 uh, sqs has come up with a very nice uh, foot switch or hand trigger device that uses a a usb dongle and he has that on his um, blog so you just lo look for km4 sqs blog and uh, he explains how to do all that uh, how to build it. it's really simple it's like two wires and a push button and a dongle and it works perfectly you can either hook that up to a trigger or you can hook it up to a foot switch We've done contests with the damn thing, and it works great. Uh, WinKey, if you want to send Paddle CW, and there's a thing, uh, that a software wedgeware, I call it, that's called Remote Key or Interface, and that uh, there's a group for it. Uh, just Google uh, in Groups I.O. Remote Key or Interface for details on how to build those particular devices. There are several others coming down the pike that allow you to use the WinKey remotely. Uh, there's also the built-in WinKey uh, uh program that allows you to remote a win key to another win key it's somewhere down the road we're thinking about doing that but for now uh the ra the, the radio actually lets you ha do cw right from the screen and i'll show you that in a little bit uh and but uh, i recommend two monitors i'm running this with four monitors actually uh and really pushing my computer here but uh uh, it works quite well with two monitors minimum because you have uh, your log or whatever on one side and you have the radio GUI on the other one. So it's like having, you know, a, a computer log for a physical radio. It's just that the radio is not sitting where you're sitting. It's somewhere in the, in cyberspace. Uh, <clears throat> Flex Radio 3.1.12 is the highest uh, level right now. It's free. Green Heron Everywhere uh, to control the rotors, uh, 2.7.4, it's free. Uh, we use AnyDesk uh, to connect uh, to our local uh, clients and to move things around. And a web browser to run the SmartLink, which is the station uh, connectivity device, and also to uh, turn the power switch on and off as needed. And also Slack, which is the, op uh, the uh, software that we used for operator coordination. We'll show you that later. And you also need a lot of patience and understanding because there's a lot of moving parts in this. But it does work quite well. Now, uh, you can also run this on Apple Macintosh, but the the problem with Apple's uh, software, the native software uh, for the Apple Macintosh system, is it's expensive. Uh, the cheapest one is sixty nine dollars. the uh, The other option that you have is one hundred and twenty four dollars. So there's no free ride in Apple. So uh, you can run everything that needs to be run in here. It's very difficult to interface the uh, Morse code environment in the Apple environment. The positive for the Apple environment is the audio has less latency because audio in Windows takes a lot longer to go around, around the computer, which takes a lot less time for it to run around inside the Macintosh computer. So it uh, has some positives and negatives. But again, uh, I, what I really say is my recommendation is just go out and get like a $150 used computer that's decent, like an older uh, uh, to, uh, Toshiba or an older uh, Lenovo I use Lenovo ThinkPads, uh, W530s. They have uh, i8, uh, i7 processors, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, and uh, solid-state hard drive. You can get them for $250. So, uh, uh, and they're, they're like $2,500 machines uh, four years ago. So it's it's the the most convenient and easiest way to get it is uh, instead of using your Mac, just buy a PC and make it make everything happen. Uh, and if you into Linux, Unix, Android, whatever else, none of that's supported. However, we're working towards fixing that by being able to remote into the local client that we have back at the station using AnyDesk. Right now, we've got it working on CW. We've got it working on FT8. We cannot get it to work on phone because of audio going. The audio coming from the radio works, but audio going from your microphone locally to the radio doesn't work quite yet. We're working on a way around that. There's always, like the previous guy said, don't tell us we can't do something. We'll figure out a way to do it. And uh, it'll eventually get there. But right now, it, you can do CW, you can do uh, FT8, and you can listen to sideband. 
uh, doing uh, using uh, the uh, AnyDesk uh, system. Uh, we've chosen AnyDesk other than uh, another application. We've evaluated three, AnyDesk uh, and uh, TeamViewer and uh, a thing called Ultra, Ultra Viewer. The Ultra Viewer doesn't give you a lot of flexibility, but it's really simple and it's very fast. But uh, it's limited on what you can do. Team Viewer nags you constantly. It tells you that uh, you're using it for commercial purposes, which true or not. I'm tired of sending them emails telling them that I'm an amateur operator and I don't use this for business. They don't. They refuse to understand that. So the hell with them. And uh, any desk never nags me, and it's extremely fast and unbelievably easy to operate. Uh, you can just go to their website. It downloads the software and it works. It's the kind of software that I like. So uh, one of the things that we like to say is uh, I'll get you on the system, but it's up to you to learn how to use it. There's lots of videos. Here's a whole listing of different videos that uh, have been uh, done by the folks from Flex or from users, basically. Uh, they're everywhere. Um, it's you watch the videos. You'll learn how to make it go. A guy named Michael Walker, who now works for Flex but was just a user a while ago, but they hired him. Uh, makes a plethora of videos and is very easy to understand and knows uh, knows how to explain things very well. And uh, just look for, for them. There's actually a Facebook group for Flex users. And you can get on there and be a squeaky wheel and yell and scream about some of the features that you'd like to see the, them incorporate. But, you know, good luck with that. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, we have on our, our website, the Tampa Amateur Radio website, I uh, did a little quick YouTube about how to use our rigs, and I'll be improving that as we go along. Because this is, this project is a, it has a, a life of its own. It grows on its own. It, it, the people say, "Hey, well, wouldn't it be cool if we did this?" And I think about it, "Hey, you could do that. So let's try that." So it's kind of an organic growth thing. So let's get started. So this is how you would set it up on your on your computer. Uh, first of all, you go to the get the following document called Smart Link Quick Start Guide. Smart Link is the way you connect from your house to the radio club and how it connects back to your computer. Uh, the document gives you a background how to use it. The key is don't open your own account because we have one password and user uh, name that we share between, between all our users because, unfortunately, that's the way Flex is right now. Flex is working for a new version that allows to have a more user granularity, but right now they don't have that available. So we deal with what we can deal with. So we'll give you a password. We'll give you the username. Don't share it with anybody, but don't open your own account because you don't need it. And you'll install this, this software. Uh, Smart SDR. This Think of Smart SDR as the control panel for the radio. Uh, Smart Cat, which is the uh, uh, interface to your computer that allows the uh, radio to talk to your computer and the computer to talk to your radio for things like push to talk and uh, frequency, et cetera, et cetera. And DAX, which stands for Digital Audio Transfer. And DAX is this magic software that allows uh, audio from your microphone to go round and round and round, come through the Internet, come out at the, at the clubhouse on, a, uh, on, the, on the radio itself and go out through the air. It's absolute magic, but you got a latency of about 20 milliseconds, but you, after a while you get used to it. So that's how it all works. And then we'll install each one. So first of all, the next thing you do is you got to join Slack. Slack is a freeware. Think of it as a chat room. Remember back in the old days when you had uh, CompuServe? Uh, it's basically the modern web way to do what you used to do on CompuServe. If you're old like me and remember CompuServe, I was one of the CompuServe users from way back. Using it with a modem, with, what is it, those, those uh, modems that, uh, that you bought at Radio Shack that you put your phone in at 300 baud. That's uh, that's how far back back I go with this crap, but uh, it's basically this works the same way as CompuServe, and what we do with Slack is we let everybody know uh, uh, who's using the radio, when they're using it, et cetera, et cetera. It looks like this when you join it. You get a link. The link says go to the Tampa Amateur Radio Club, which we send that link to you on your email when you join, and then it come kind of looks like this. So here you go. We send messages back and forth. We got different channels. The general information, we got op coordination. This is the one you'd use the most. Random thoughts for just crazy stuff that comes up. And remote radio questions, which some is a question and answer thing that I monitor a lot. People ask, you know, how this works? Why doesn't this do that? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all our users are listed just like this. 
over here, then we go over here and fill out your uh, your uh, profile. And it's important that you do your profile with uh, with your call sign and then your name because we we sort everything with a call sign. Uh, and away we go. So each time you uh, you log on to to uh, Slack, <clears throat> you use the Slack operator coordination uh, uh, facilities. And uh, we say, hey, we're going to be using the radio today at 4 o'clock. Anybody else using it, et cetera, et cetera. Right now, it seems to have worked. Nobody seems to have collide all that much. And when people collide, yeah, they work things out. So there's no, you know, no schedule time. There's no, you know, usually what I do is I like the contest uh, a, a bit. So if nobody's using the radio well, uh, that weekend or nobody wants to use it, I'll say, hey, can I use it for a contest, et cetera, et cetera. The only the only reliable time that I schedule on the radio just for my own use is sweepstakes phone. That's that's my that's my time. And NX4N Chris, he schedules sweepstakes CW. Those are the ones that are set in stone uh, from the day we installed this stuff, and that's how we do it. And I've already uh, I I got second place in my class uh, last year with uh, with this rig. The first time I ever did a full time contest in uh, in remote, and it was pretty interesting. But I ended up second uh, in the uh, and nationally, actually North America, uh, with uh, with the TARC remote, 100% remote operation on Sweepstakes Phone, which is pretty neat. So let's put Slack aside for now, and then let's get started uh, with SmartLink. SmartLink will look like this. Uh, when you get uh, <clears throat> your account, we'll send you your password <clears throat> and your uh, and the username. Uh, you'll log into the system. It'll look like this when you go log in. Here's where you put the credentials that we sent you. Uh, the email, it's not your email, it's the email we send you, which is the email for the radio. And it's not your password, it's the password for the radio. You click on login. Then you go start up uh, Smart SDR, double click on Smart SDR, and you get a choice of radios. And you see here, um, uh, the account that I'm using, uh, I share it with my own personal radio. So we have, have two rigs uh, that you can work in. I have no problems in people using my my rig when I'm not using it. Uh, if that's fine, just you know, send me an email, let me know, and <clears throat> you can use it. Uh, the beauty of Flex is that we have both rigs, my rig and the club's rig, set up identically from the standpoint of all the ports and all the audio and, uh, IOs. So that means with just two clicks, you can switch from the radio at the club to the radio here at my house. Uh, so <clears throat> it works very well, and it's uh, very flexible, and it's truly magic. That's the only way I can desc describe this. It's truly magic, because before, you know, when you switch operators, like in the contest, you'd have to say, stand by, we're going to switch operators, and the one that's on the air now unplugs his headset, takes his key with him, stands up, moves the chair back, the next guy sits down, plugs his stuff in, gets himself ready, you know, uh, figures out and goes. With Flex, it's a thing called multi-flex, which means two users can log on to the same, what they call a uh, slice, which is a VFO at the same time. And only one has push to talk. So what happens is when the operator just sits down, listens, so he can listen to the same receiver, he can hear the, the same pileup all at the same time, and whenever they're ready to switch, uh, all the, the guy who is uh, on the air right now, all he does is turn off uh, uh, Smart SDR, and bingo, the guy who's coming on gets the system, it starts working all by itself, and away you go. So you can turn over a, a, cha a station changeover, an operator changeover, really, really quick. It's one of the best things about this system that I really like from a contest environment. Anyway, so now you got to set up CAT. So CAT basically is your interface to the uh, computer. As you can see, you can set your serial COM ports. It's just like having a radio sitting in your, in your shack. You have COM ports that you can set up remotely, and all this works over the Internet. And a win key. It has a built-in win key uh, system at the computer itself. So uh, you set up the win key on a COM port, and uh, away you go. So you've got the port set up. After you're done with your ports, <clears throat> you have to set up your audio, which is a digital audio exchange. You have to tell it, you know, your transmitter gain, et cetera, et cetera. This is the, uh, the transmitter, the signal going into the transmitter. Here's a signal from the microphone going into the, the, the point that goes into the transmitter. And here's your receivers coming back. And you also have IQ streams. And IQ streams are interesting because you can put your, you can marry the information coming from the IQ streams, which the IQ streams is the, the VFO itself, the display, the pan adapter display. You can marry that to a, uh, to a uh, cluster 
uh, server, which is what I do. And the call signs that the cluster receives, that's the spots, are superimposed right onto the screen. Uh, so you can see what little pip goes with what call sign. It's very interesting. And then when you want to work them, you just go there, double click on them, and you're there. Um, excellent, excellent ideas. It works very well. So you start the radio. This is what the radio looks like when it starts. After you set up your DAX and CAT, this is what it looks like right here. This is the front panel of the radio. Um, you, anything you can do with the radio, you can do here. Here's your power meter, SWR meter, RF power levels, uh, frequency display, filters, uh, mode display, um, the uh, uh, your audio level, your compression level, equalization for transmitter and receive. You can see you can change them differently. And if you're going to do AM, it's AM carrier level and Vox. Vox doesn't work very well uh, in remote environments because of the delay. But other than that, uh, you know, it's like being there. So that's what it looks like. And uh, let's close S uh, SSDR for now and move on to uh, installing the uh, the uh, Green Heron Everywhere client. Green Heron packages their system with a server and a client. The server is at the clubhouse. You don't need a server. All you need is the client. So what you <laughs> ignore, this is very not very well uh, thought of, but that's the way they do it. Just ignore this one. This is the one you want right here. So you get that one and you install it on your computer and you'll get a, a little uh, icon that looks like that. And there's two, you'll get two of them. You get one that looks like this, another one has a number two in it. That's for SO2R. Ignore that one. You won't need it. Uh, and then you set up the ports. We only have one control port. It's set up to do 256 separate controls for our server, 256 servers. We only need one. So you get the IP address of the radio, the port number, which you have to open on your computer. Uh, our username would be Tark and then our password. And then you click on here and it'll say go green, connected. Away you go and you get something that looks like that. Let me explain what this is. Uh, right now we have two towers connected to the radio, the south tower, which is uh, the six meter tower. Only thing on here is six meters. The back tower, which is uh, four, uh, 80 through, uh, through uh, 10 meters uh, on this one. Uh, and also including the work bands on the uh, wire. Uh, you can switch them here. As you can see, there's our antenna um, antenna control the dummy load, uh, which we always leave on when we're not using the rig, our 40-meter feed, our 20-meter feed, our 15-meter feed, our 10-meter feed, and a sloper for 80 meters and 30 right here. And it also shows you this display here with this compass rose. I created this map, and uh, we send it to our users, and they can put it in there. They either You get a normal compass rose, or you get... Uh, you get this map, uh, which makes sense. You know, you want to talk to Italy, you click on it. I'll show you later how that works. But this is just a, a general, you can put these three windows anywhere you want them on the screen. And they move, and you can move them on any screen. You can move them from monitor to monitor, whichever way you feel happy with it. And then that your, remember, rem, your computer remembers that. And other people's computers can be set up completely differently. Uh, our antenna switch, as you can see here, which I showed you before, you can switch the antennas, whatever, and uh, you, as you, you don't see the six meter here because it's dedicated. The one six meter feed goes directly into the uh, antenna number two input of the radio. Uh, and again, you can put this everywhere. And you see software control here on the bottom. Uh, you can also click on that and set it up for the two VFOs to control uh, the antennas automatically switching when you're using software like N1MM Contest Logger. That's the only one that works with this right now. Uh, and uh, it's very handy because you never have to look at the antenna switch. But we right now uh, encourage everyone to do that manually until we get uh, more experience in operating the rig, and uh, then we can let the automation take over. It's always better to set up being able to do it manually and not worry about the automation until later. That's how it works. This is what the uh, antenna rotors look like. You can actually enter here the uh, uh, the location that you want to go, the azimuth that you want to go, hit turn, and the antenna will turn there and stop. Um, both of them can turn the same way if you want, or in the opposite ways. It makes no difference. And this is a close-up of the uh, the map. Another way to turn an antenna is to grab this the middle of this uh, fan and drag it to where you want it to go, let it go, and the antenna will turn there. And I'll show you how that works in the live demo in just a moment. So now we're ready to rock and roll. So let's get started and do some flexing. First thing we have to do is you ask if the radio is in use. And you do that using the uh, uh, the Slack application. Use your browser, open up uh, 
Uh, the Slack application, search for the Tampa Amateur Radio Club. Go to the op coordination chat. you got to do this every time, either when you're operating remote or when you go to the uh, clubhouse to let everybody know it's there. And you open the, uh, the uh, GHE client and connect to the rotor. So let's uh, go to Slack. Go over here. Go to op coordination, as you can see right there. Click on that and ask if the radio is in use down in the bottom there. And boom, this is what happens on your screen. <laughs> you get this after you log into all this stuff. So let's take a look and do it. Let's do some live stuff. So here we go. Uh, off we go. And let me uh, change my screen here. I'm going to log into the radio remotely. I'm hoping that uh, please somebody tell me that you're seeing my uh, my screen here with uh, any desk on. Uh, while I continue, yes, there. Uh, yes, I see the uh, that desk is on. Perfect. All right. So now I'm going to log into another computer on another part of in at my shack. Um, first of all, I got to thank my wife for letting me use the the dining room table to do this because it's the only way I can show you all these screens is to do it this way. Because the other way, the software only lets you use one screen at a time. So thank you, Linda, <laughs> letting me use the dining room table to do this and run a wire across the kitchen because I can't do this wirelessly because I don't have enough uh, enough uh, bandwidth to do it wirelessly for all the mess that I'm doing here on the Internet. So I'll open this computer. Here we go. It's going to connect in just a moment here. And my password, enter, and this is the screen that on another computer. This is the computer that I use to access the radio. It's just another identical uh, uh, w, uh, Lenovo uh, W530 uh, uh, ThinkPad. Uh, I find these machines absolutely hockey puck reliable. Really strongly recommend that if you want a real, really reliable computer for ham radio, that's what you need to do. And they're easy to get, and there's, you can find lots of them. They're three thousand dollar computers. Five years later, they're three hundred bucks. Great stuff. Anyway, let's open the radio. First of all, uh, you'll see that I have multiple screens here, and uh, I can switch through three screens, which is what I use normally. I'm running my cluster software here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open uh, the Smart SDR application. Now, for this this case, I'm going to be using my radio here at home because if I use the one at the clubhouse, there's not enough bandwidth to really do what I need to do. I only have 10 megabits up, and, and that uh, makes it a difficult thing. But it'll, it'll feel just like the same way because they're both identical. So I'm going to connect to this rig. Then I'm going to switch screen. There's the, there's the rig. I want to switch the screen here. I'm going to open my DAX. Open. I open my CAT. Open. And wait for them both to come up. There you go. Connect to the W4LT remote. There's all my ports. And these ports are identical from my rig to the rig at the clubhouse and to any other rig that we would get in the Tampa Amateur Radio Club family. Um, ideally, that way it makes it very easy to, to switch from one rig to the other. Uh, open my, uh, my DAX here. Connect. Uh, it's going to connect in just a moment here. Get the correct uh, computer. The smart link. There we go. Whoop, it didn't connect. Why didn't you connect? Let's close that. Yes. There we go. Let's try it again. DAX. Always a demo. Things always blow up in the demo. We used to do this for a living uh, at trade shows. There we go. Oh, oh here it shows. Show, show you something. We know that this radio is remote because it says Smart Link here. See? We know that this radio is local to me because it doesn't say Smart Link. If someone was on the radio at the clubhouse, this available would not be there. It would just show, you know, a yellow. Two people could be on one radio at the same time. That's the limit, two people per radio. But um, that means four users can be listening to the radio at the same time, but only two can be transmitting. So let's just open my local rig, connect. There's my DAXs all flying in. Well, we're going to open the rotor. Now, this rotor is not at my, my, uh, uh, my station. It's at the clubhouse, but it works exactly the same way. Makes no difference. So here is my rotor layout uh, on screen number one. Uh, I have it set up this way, and I'll show you in just a minute why. Uh, now we're going to go opening my station log. 
which is amateur contest log. N3FJP will open up. It's going to be on this screen here, my number one monitor. It'll refresh as soon as it refreshes. Notice that now I've automatically connected to the rig. N3FJP does a really, really cool thing. Scott has has implemented the Radio's API, the, the uh, uh, Applications Programming Interface, to his logger. There's no ports needed. There's no settings for baud rate, nothing. You just turn on N3FJP. It finds the radio on the, on, on the network and starts it. It's, I wish every log guy, you know, uh, writer would do this. It is just transparent to everything. It's even more transparent when you switch radios from one radio to the other because it doesn't care. It just sees a radio and it connects to it. It's beautiful. So now we can take a look and see what's my log that I've got here. We've got our, our uh, spots that come up here. We can click on the spot, and the radio will go to that frequency. won't do that now because I'm set up for 40 meters. Uh, I can choose my antenna. Let's choose the 40-meter antenna for, the, for Grins, and I'll show you. We want to we wanna work uh, Africa. So we grab it here. We turn. We drop, and watch what happens to the antenna. Off it goes. Off it go towards Africa, and it'll stop on its own. By the way, this is a clock application that I run in my uh, my computer to let me know what's going on. I also have it here, but this is a lot bigger for old eyes like mine. So watch the uh, antenna will just stop at somewhere close to 78 degrees. They're never you know plus or minus three degrees, They're not that accurate. Eh, we'll get there close. So it just stops on its own. Beautiful. We go over here. Hit done here. Now we're going to open WSJT because let's say we're going to work. Uh, uh, we're going to work uh, some uh, FT8. WSJT opens up. There we go. We should have, hear audio momentarily. I have to turn the audio up here, right? Yep. Hopefully you're hearing some audio. I'm hearing some audio here. Are, are you hearing audio from the radio? Maybe. If you're not hearing it, you're not hearing it. But it is what it is with the way I've got it set yes, up here. Are. Oh, you are hearing it. Good. Good. Here's some WSJT uh, QSOs showing up. Uh, I could call CQ by clicking on it, and away we go. Um, I can tune around the radio. I don't need it with WSJT. Let's move to 20 meters. So if we go to 20 meters, I can just pull it down here, 14. Now I'm on 20 meter FT, FT8. I'm going to switch to, I'm, first of all, for my rig, my rig automatically switches antennas. The rig at the clubhouse wouldn't, so we would have to go over here, uh, screen number one, and we would switch to the 20 meter antenna. We would come back to the rig and uh, do an ATU uh, uh, cycle. I use an external ATU, and my ATU automatically, ha I've taught it what antennas go with what band and what port. I have a KAT500, awesome, awesome piece of equipment. Highly recommend it. So now I'm going to switch to my tri-bander from my wire and tune it automatically by clicking on tune. There you go. You saw the SWR drop. So now I'm on my tri-bander. I came from my wire to my tri-bander, completely transparent to me. And now we're on, uh, on uh, 20, as you can see here. And uh, I can adjust my my noise floor. And let's say we work somebody. Let's see. Let's wait till the next thing and see if we can work somebody here. How about if we work? Uh, how about uh, this VE? We we'll give him a call. Here's my power. I'm running about 30 watts out. Uh, there's my uh, level. You don't want to go beyond the minus 10. Let's see if he hears us. Uh, and uh, I'll show you how beautiful this works remotely. I'm sitting at my dining room table, folks. Uh, using how I can go anywhere on the face of the planet that I have internet and be able to do this. Uh, he didn't hear. Oh, yes, he did hear us. There he is. So now we're going to work him now. Here's all my reports, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Notice he turns red when I give him a call. He's giving us a zero zero, so that's a pretty decent signal for 30 watts. <laughs> so. Uh, Let's just finish this QSO. I don't want to drop him in the middle, and I'll show you. I've got uh, a few more minutes. Uh, I think I can show you CW. 
Uh, just a moment here. Uh, let's see what this QSO does. There he is. Now I'm going to log him. I click on this. Okay, I've got him logged. And we're ready to go. And then he'll send me 73 and we're done. And we now have that VE3 in the log. Beautiful. Now, uh, remember that uh, WSJT, WSJT log is ADIF compatible. So after I'm done here, I export these uh, log, these uh, contacts that I made with the WSJT log. I'll come over to uh, to this one, and as you can see, I've got a bunch of of FT8. Uh, this is a contest logs here, but anyway, you'll have a whole bunch of FT8 logs in here, and I can just transfer the FT8 stuff into my uh, <clears throat> my home log, and then I can go over and uh, and send them to the uh, to uh, where is it uh, settings? I can send them to uh, uh, the uh, the lovely uh, uh, exported AD, ADIF to back them up. Or uh, send them to uh, call book of the world, uh, LOTW, whatever. And I have a call book that's built in here as well. So that's what that works. Let's uh, slip uh, to uh, leave it on 20 meters here. And we'll switch to CW and show you how that works. Switch to this screen. Bang, bang. Close this. There's WSJT closed. Now we'll go to CW. I'll turn the speaker up here. We tune this radio by grabbing it. Turn it. So I'm tuning down to the CW portion of the band. There's a couple of CW signals. Let's put it in CW mode. CW. We'll use a, uh, let's see, a 500 hertz filter. And tune this fella in. Over here. And I'll use my mouse wheel. As you can see, I'm rolling my mouse wheel back and forth. To tune him in. Let's try this guy. It's a little stronger. So I can adjust that for there. Let's go to an empty place in the band right here. We're going to hit tune again to set my SWR. That's good. Now notice it says here CWX. Click on CWX. I get this right here. What that is is a um, memories. I can set up my memories, etc., etc., etc. I don't have any loaded right now, but I could do that or I can send live. Uh, let's close setup, send live, and send some Vs here. And click on live, and send Vs again. That's me sending. So uh, uh, we can work CW stations through there if we want. Um, that works quite well. When we're done with CW, we just close it. And away we go. Now we can go 20 meters and show you how it works in phone. I can't transmit in phone, unfortunately, because the audio doesn't work quite right. I'll just find a station up here in the in the phone band. Uh, let's see around here somewhere. Uh, about uh, here. Now I'm going to change the size here because the phone signals are are uh, bigger than the CW signals. Let's look at this guy here. Change over from CW to upper sideband. Doing this guy in. Okay, there he is. Hopefully you can hear that. You can see that my microphone's moving up and down, but I'm not getting a signal into it yet. Uh, that's uh, for future. I can't do that now. I, it does work, but I can't do that now because I don't have enough bandwidth. Let's go down here to this part of the band. Not complete control of this project. So now I'm done with the rig. I'm going to shut the radio down. The way you shut it down, just hit the X here. Boom, the radio's off. <laughs> it's that easy. Uh, and um, now we're just going to put stuff away. So I'll go up to my screen here, number three. I close these, which is the connections. I'll come over and close my uh, antenna switches by clicking, well, put it on dummy load first. Putting this at zero, or close close to it, one is close enough. You'll see the antenna will start to turn. Um, I always wait till it finishes turning. I'm done with my log, so I can come over here and I can close my log. I'll wait till this gets to close to zero and um, uh, get there. Bang, 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 bang. Off we go. I think it's close enough. Four, there we go. Oh, bandwidth is, you can see it's slowing down, slowing down. <clears throat> Close this. 
and we're through and I'll open the PowerPoint again uh, I come over here and share my screen new share PowerPoint share bang off we go and I carry slide <clears throat> so that was easy wasn't it <laughs> So, in closing, and I got 15 minutes, so I can answer some questions if anybody has it. Yeah, it's a complex system, <clears throat> okay? But remember one thing that you're doing at the Tam Tampa Amateur Radio Club. This is a world-class HF station. This is a, a HF station that wins uh, contests. Uh, let me see if I can, if people are doing something here. I can't. Uh, uh, participants, how do I get to see what you guys got? Uh, Anyway, whatever. Somebody will tell me uh, if there's questions, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, it's a world-class station. But, uh, you know, and you're sitting in your, like I am right now, I'm sitting in my dining room. Okay? I'm sitting in my dining room, and I can run a contest from here. And I can win a contest from here because we have really good antennas and very high towers with very good transceiver. Um, it's a shared resource across our members. If you're a member of the club, this is a resource that you can use. If you're, you know, during COVID times, do whatever, you can't get to the clubhouse, you can use this resource 24-7. And that's the beauty of it, because before we could only use the club when somebody was at the club, and, you know, uh, people would go there for a couple hours, and then the club would stay empty for four or five days till the Saturday mornings when people would go over there. Uh, but now you can use this facility 24-7, 365, anytime you want. So that doesn't go to waste. We're using our equipment. We're using everything that we have to, to its uh, largest extent. Um, there's always people that make the trip to the clubhouse. So we've all, all decided that a couple of things. First of all, you have to be a member of the club to use these facilities. Second of all, uh, you have to be a, mem a you have to live in the West Central Florida region or West Central Florida section. We don't want to have, you know, everybody in the whole country logging on to our station because it's a local resource for our people here. Uh, and um, the third of all, you have to have a minimum of a general license to use it. You're not automatically an extra when you start using this ring. Uh, so you have to keep within your license. It's really cutting edge stuff. Uh, we think it works very well. It keeps evolving and getting better and better and more reliable and more reliable. I had it in beta test for about three months. We tried to break it. We broke it very often. <laughs> uh, we we found out the gr uh, grounding is a very very this radio is very particular about grounding, uh, and uh, we we blew it up a couple times with SWR and they had to reset it from fa to factory specifications. But now I think we got it working pretty well, uh, and uh, it's fun to use. We also have a smaller station that has its own tower as well, it has a small tribander and another six meter beam. It's using a TS five ninety. And that's going to end up being kind of like the, the simple remote. We're going to have a simple remote and the complicated remote. And people should start using the simple remote and then move into the complicated remote as they get more experience using it. Uh, but, again, this, this works very well. It's not that hard to deal with. You just got to keep your, you know, you got to think about what you do and when you do it. And if it's, it's smart enough to take care of itself and it doesn't let you blow it up that easy. We got it to that point that it's reliable from a standpoint that it's not foolproof, but it really challenges you to blow it up. Um, and it's fun. And again, we're using the gear we, we have. Uh, we, you don't have to go to the clubhouse to use it. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you just had an operation and you're sick and you can't walk. Well, and you can still play with, with a world-class station. Uh, and that's the beauty of the whole situation. So, uh, that's how we do it, do it at TARC. There's many different ways of doing it at different facilities. This is the way this facility works. We, uh, we again, constantly evolve uh, how we, uh, we set this thing up. But uh, we're very confident. We've been working on this project for now, uh, Daryl, I think it's about four years. <laughs> and uh, we finally got it to the point where I feel very confident that it's, uh, it's working as, about as well as we can make it work with the equipment that we have. We don't have an amplifier. Uh, that can be arranged. My station at home that I connected to does have an amplifier, so it can run 500 watts with automatic antenna switching. That's one of the things we don't have at the clubhouse. Uh, maybe someday we'll install a kilowatt amplifier out there uh, that's remote capable, and we'll make it go. 
So if there's any questions, so we got five, uh, 10 minutes left for any questions or any configuration things that I can go up with, I'll uh, throw it to the club. Can you hear All me? Right. Hello. Hey, Angel. Uh, hang on just a second, Angel. Thank you very much, Lou. That's an excellent presentation. You may use the reactions to applaud or whatever. And Angel, you are first up uh, with your question. Uh, with all the conditions satisfied, except for the radio uh, at home, can I use it with a different radio? Let's say like uh, FT VX 101. Well, it, right now it's the we have like I say two stations. We use the TS 590 uh, with the Kenwood remote software. It's native remote software, uh, and then you can access that using any desk and audio back and forth. And that station is mostly used with FT8. This particular station uses its own native software, which is Smart SDR. Uh, there is an application out there called ham, uh, what is it, uh, remotehams.com. And that software can be used with any brand that has serial control and uh, sound card in and out. Uh, we started with that software, but we found it has a lot of limits. And also, it's not, it was supported very strongly. It was built by a guy that uh, worked at, uh, that works at uh, Elecraft. Uh, and he's busy doing other things. And then they had forest fires. And then they were started moving, and Elecraft was building the K4. So he hasn't really had a lot of time to work on it. So we switched away from that to the, the Flex software. So, the so Yezu may have its own remote access software. We don't have any Yezu rigs, so that's why we use what we use. Thank you. All right, we have two folks with hands raised. Uh, I guess, uh, Gordon, you go ahead and uh, with your question. And you may unmute yourself. So you have to unmute yourself uh, when you ask him. Jeremy, Jeremy was there before me, so I'll defer to him first. All right, very good, Gordon. Uh, Jeremy, you may unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, Roko, one comment and two questions. The comment is that I just mailed a check last night to Tark uh, <laughs> for 35 buckaroonies. So I guess uh, if you guys don't reject me for my- Where do you live? For appearance or whatever, then maybe I'll be a member. Where do you uh, live? Uh, Land of Lakes. Oh, you're in, you're, you're in. Okay, uh, first question, uh, this is a quickie. Uh, repeat the model number of the Lenovo you recommend. This is a Lenovo um, ThinkPad W530. Uh, you okay. can get, there is a group, there's a company in uh, uh, W1VE turned me on to them in New Hampshire, in, uh, in Merrimack, New Hampshire, or somewhere around Boston. And they buy these things from corporations and refurbish them, and it, they look brand new. And it was 300 bucks. You get an i, uh, it's an i7 processor, eight core processor. Yeah, that sounds good stuff. 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's got uh, mm. like really, really good graphics. It's got mm. uh, uh, three ports, so you can run three monitors with it. It built-in audio. Then the keyboard is super. You know, it's it's an IBM keyboard. So, so what's the uh, like URL of the place that sells them? I will post that for you guys. I don't have it with me. It's uh, oh, RTR, okay. RTR Computers or something like that. Uh, uh, recyclable Technologies, something or other. But look for, uh, you can Google RTR Computers, and it's in New England. I don't uh, have it off the top of my head. I've bought oh, so two from them, and they're great. Yeah. Second question there. Um, do you, uh, can you summarize some of the quirks? of the flex radio flex 6400 if you're a cw operator you're going to hate it oh interesting. Uh, okay. you, you can't use paddles uh, yet we're working on that now you can okay. use paddles you'd have to go out and spend another uh one thousand two hundred dollars for a maestro uh, that's what i did so i could use paddles with a maestro but you can't use them with just a computer yet there are people that are working on how to do that with wind keys and external wind key things and look at that at, at uh, that one website that I told you about in groups uh, for remote uh, remote keyboard interface or remote keying interface for flex. Now you uh, mentioned uh, kind of like you needed to have a reset I think you said uh, for the flex or something. Maybe well I'm wrong about that. We, we have sometimes you can confuse it and the radio gets confused and you have to restart reset it. Uh, so that's why we have that at 
Ethernet controlled power switch that can reboot everything. Um, e each device that we have out there is connected to the UPS through this power switch. And the power switch is in, fr in, in front of the UPS so, or after the UPS, so you can turn things on and off remotely. For instance, if you get an SWR fault and you lock up the radio, you'd have to turn off the radio, turn the DC power supply off, wait Ooh. three minutes, turn the DC back on, turn the radio back on two minutes later, and it resets itself because mm. it's a computer. <laughs> it's And if you don't, you don't put it away, you don't want to put away the computer's toys inside the computer cleanly, the computer's not happy when it reboots again. Oh, so, okay. oh, when it reboots it. Oh, geez. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's good to know because I've been looking at the 6400. It's a great rig um, from the standpoint <laughs> of there is nothing out there better to be uh, for for remote use. The, remoting with this thing is stupidly easy. Anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. It really is. Uh, it has other quirks. I'll put it to you that way. D the delay in it is maddening for me in a contest but you get used to it you don't look at the power you know the, the thing that rises and falls with the power don't look at the power meter just listen to the side tone because the side tone is local but the radio like 20 milliseconds later transmits after you press the key it's just nuts but uh is that get, because of the ethernet delays yes in... it's two things it's windows uh, audio has a delay and again you're going through the internet and in our case we're going from my house to uh, Auburndale, from Auburndale to Orlando, from Orlando to someplace in, in Chicago, from Chicago to uh, uh, San Diego, where the uh, Hamwan is, from San Diego uh, to Atlanta, from Atlanta to Orlando, from Orlando to Tampa, and then over the air to the clubhouse. No, okay, okay. Light takes a while to move. Yeah, yeah you, you have some delays there for sure. So. Yeah, it's light yeah. speed delay plus... The other thing you got to remember too is that this is voice over IP, so jitter is important. Routers don't send the same packets the same way, so sometimes the packets get there in the wrong order, and and TCP/IP has to put them together in the right order, and that, that all takes time to do. And plus latency of all the connections that adds up. So. Yep. Because but it works. A... Okay, well, Gordon, you have the I believe the next question or comments, and you may go ahead. A nice system. Can you tell me if you know about the ARRL field day rules? Because you're not at the transmitter, can you can you enter this into field day? How does that work? Will be one D, um, multi operator single transmitter D with uh, uh, with uh, um, normal power. This is one of the reasons we had got this radio. We were able to compete in field day last year in the middle of the pandemic, because all our operators, there were seven of us, we all operated remotely from our house. And we were able to compete in field day. And I think we got like second place, and first in the section and second place in the Southeast. Doing it all remotely, doing it all on single sideband, doing it with this rig. So we'd be 1D. Because the transmitter is at the clubhouse. We just happen to be in different places. Are, you're sure the AWRL is happy with that? No one complained. Uh, again, AWRL says the transmitter has to be in a one location, right? The transmitter doesn't move. The operators aren't at the transmitter location, but they're they're logically at the transmitter, but physically in a different location. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. And as a result, they would have to, you know, use the designator for where the transmitter is located, which in this case is your clubhouse, mm -hmm. would be 1D West Central Florida, or if they're Correct. running two transmitters, it'd be two Delta or whatever the Correct. case may be. Correct. Which uh, uh, the ARRL, if some of you haven't read yet, they have extended the rule uh, uh, exceptions for this year's field day again, which doesn't surprise me. And I think they're limiting the Class D stations to, what, 150 watts, if I read correctly? Yes. 100 or 100, 100. It's 100 or 150 watts. I forget which one. So. 150 because ARL does that extra 50 watts. I don't know why they don't. They do, but they do. Oh, well. It is what it is, I guess. Hey. Does anyone else have any questions before we end the YouTube stream? And we, we'll leave the, this uh, Zoom on during lunchtime. So if you want to chat, talk about a project, uh, swap stories, uh, whatever, you know, you could do that. Great,
Uh, go ahead, Bill. KB3 Tango Bravo Tango. Go ahead with your question, sir, or comment. Now, first, I need to apologize to the moderator. I had to switch uh, devices, so I couldn't re I can't figure out how to rename on my iPad. <clears throat> but I also <laughs> use my iPad as a remote for my 6400. There you go. It works great. Uh, I might be interested in contacting you to get more advice on shall we say using multiple stations because my li son lives in lithia mm -hmm. and he's a extra also mm -hmm. so your call sign and email are on qrz uh i'm good in qrz and also you're seeing it on your screen and you're you can see me in the camera right Yes. Did, hey, Lou. That? Yes. Post post your, that any information like links to the chat, and then uh, we'll have okay. it there recorded there as well. We can do that. Watch this. You see this? This is my iPhone, right? Let me connect to my radio over my iPhone, and I won't let me do it. <laughs> uh, well, let me connect to the club radio over my iPhone. There it is. There's the club radio. Yep. On my phone. Just like on my tablet. <laughs> <laughs> to, to me, this is, to, you know, I tell people this. It, to me, it's a miracle. This is a ele total electronic miracle. You know, when you, when you think about what's going on here, it's an absolute miracle that this, that how this stuff works. It's only magic, iPhones? True magic. Is it only it iPhones? Magic. Yes. Yes. So Currently, no, there's no, there's no. Well, wait a minute. You can use, you can use a, a, um, uh, a iPad. You can use an iPhone, and you can use a Windows computer or a Windows tablet. There's no, no other software. But we're work, we're going to try to work around that at Tark. Hey Lou, as we go along and as you do updates, uh, write up an article. And we'll put it in the presser. I mean, the experimenter, and because uh, that's more tech oriented. Well, yeah. it'll make great content for the experimenter. We'll do our best. Um, and I will I will update this stuff to the chat in just a little bit because I've got to run because of this. So I will uh, be back momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Great presentation. Thank All you. Right. All righty. Well, thank you very much, Lou. You may now applaud or whatever. And uh, if he'll be back, uh, I've opened up the um, – I've taken off the waiting room because we haven't gotten the high numbers yet. So hopefully it won't blow up over lunchtime. We'll, we'll be to 100, but uh, we've been running about 20 or so. So I don't think we'll have a problem. So this time we're going to end the YouTube stream and uh, we will take a break for, I guess, 57, actually about 54, 53 minutes. So you can go get dinner. We are in the South. It is dinner time. It is supper in the evening and I refuse to change. That is my story and I'm sticking.